Make sure to head over to awfulmedia.com and check out the post about this video. It's going to have all the code right there on the page for you. You can uh, copy and paste it. You can download the files. And we'll have a live demo ready for you to check it out. And you can watch the video directly on the page. So make sure to head over to awfulmedia.com. Hey guys, today I want to talk about uh, CSS3 transitions and go over how you can implement them. Now a CSS3 transition is just like any other transition. Uh, it just helps you get from point A to point B in a certain fashion. So say you want to get from a red color to a blue color. Well, with, using this type of transition, it would blend the colors going over a certain period of time. It would uh, blend them together to reach the other color accordingly. Let me just go over a few examples here, and then we'll go into the uh, code to create these. All right, so the first one we have up top here is this blue one. And when I roll over this, it's going to change the background color of this element. And it just changes it to a, a lighter blue, a more saturated uh, color. And when I roll off, it goes back to the original state. Roll on, roll off. has that nice slow fade. And that could be useful for many things, uh, but it's just a really cool thing. And it's really, really easy to do. The second one is a little bit different. Uh, you roll over it, and the element expands in width. It goes from 450 pixels to 550 pixels. Just like that. Simple, simple stuff. And the next one, I uh, roll over it, and it's going to move off to the left 50 pixels, and the height uh, expands, as you can tell, but it's not actually the height expanding. It's the padding between the text at the top and the text and the bottom uh, getting larger. Just like that. Really cool stuff. And you can see they're all just really smooth transition, really smooth animations. And it's all so simple to do. And we're going to go over that right now. So let's go to the folder here I have. We're going to open up our index in Notepad. And the markup is very simple. We just have uh, three divs and three anchors. And the divs all have uh, unique IDs. And that's, that's it. And then we style these IDs and anchors in our CSS file. So at the top here, I have all the default files I want for, or sorry, all the default styles I want for my anchor tags. As you can see, all these are anchor tags inside here. So I can uh, decide how I want all them to look just by doing it one time here. And then I can define separate ones by using the ID of the div. So nothing special going on in here. I'm displaying it as a block so I can adjust the height and width accordingly. I am, uh, let's see. Yeah, nothing special in there. And then for one anchor, which would be this one right here, and that's the top one right there. In the styles here, we have a background color defined. And then we have this uh, WebKit transition thing here. So let's explain what this is. First of all, we're going to look at transition, because that is the uh, main property here. What transition is, is a new CSS3 uh, style, a new property, that allows you to define uh, transitions. So we're using the shorthand version of the transition property. And what that means is that we've combined all of the, there's like four or five levels here, but we've all combined them into a single property. So we can define all different uh, properties within this single transition. And the WebKit in front of that, since this is a CSS3 property, it is not uh, natively supported in most browsers. Uh, most modern browsers are pretty much there now. But uh, older browsers are definitely not there. And it's a very, very edgy area of web design working with newer stuff because it's just it's not compatible with older browsers so you definitely do not want to rely on that but what this means right here this is a prefix for a type of engine that's going to be reading this so in this case we have webkit and that means that uh, this is saying okay webkit browsers 
which in our case we're using Google Chrome, and that uses the WebKit engine. This is a transition, so the WebKit browser will see that and say, okay, so I know how to read that now. And then it's going to take this and work out whatever it says. So in this case here, we have the transition, and it's saying, okay, I want the background over two seconds of time to uh, transition to this color from that color. And this ease right here is just telling it at what rate over the two seconds of time. What it is, is it uh, accelerates and deaccelerates uh, smoothly, more smoothly over time. And there's a few other options you could uh, use for this to change it up, but ease is the default and it's usually the best option depending on what you're doing. And the background, that's just grabbing the property we want to change. And the 2S here, that stands for 2 seconds. And that's self-explanatory. The animation takes place over 2 seconds of time. And then we have the hover. Now on the hover, we have to define uh, what we want the background to become using this transition here. So in our case, when we hover over this anchor tag, we want this background color to replace that background color. And this would work without the transition. It would still replace it but it wouldn't replace it with a fade or like this transition that we have now. It would just snap right in and be there. But we want to fade it out like we do right there. Nice, slow, smooth fade. All right, on to the next one here. It's the exact same thing. We're just changing the width. And I did not define a width on this particular style. I defined it up here. So we have 450 pixels to work with. And down here, I say, okay, the transition width, one second. I did not define a rate at which it will uh, happen, but I did define a time. If you do not define uh, the seconds of the time you want it to happen within, it's not going to work for you. Make sure you define the property and the amount of time at least. And you can see that we have the width of five, uh, 550 pixels which adds 100 pixels from the default, so it will expand a total of uh, 100 pixels. Now it will expand that from the center because we have the margins on auto and the text on center. And the third one here, all we're doing is we are changing the position and the padding. The de padding, the de padding, the padding is defined up here in the anchor tag and the uh, position is defined right here. We set it to relative and we set the position on the left to zero so we have some uh, original states to work with. And then on the hover we set the left to negative 50 pixels that way it will move it off to the side 50 pixels to the left and we changed the padding so it would expand the padding as we rolled over it. And that all takes place within one second at the rate of ease. That's pretty much all those styles. Now you can use these transitions on most of the properties and you have to just think about does the browser support it and most of them you can just Google it and see if your browser or the browsers you're wanting to make you're wanting to design for will support that option. Now you have to think okay I just want to do this to where it will be like a cool thing if it works but if it doesn't work for the person's browser I don't want it to have any negative effect. Like I don't want it to be like, well, the website's broken now because you can't use that. You don't want that to happen. You want it to still be a website without these styles. But you just want the people who are up to date with the browser to get a nice experience. And the people that aren't, uh, they just get a normal experience. But it's really cool. It's really simple. And you can get decent, uh, decent effects. Oops. They can make people go, hmm, that's interesting. And uh, it is. Like, I don't know, just do something with it. See what you can do with it. It's pretty fun. So yeah, thanks for watching. I know this may have been a, a pointless video, but uh, I thought it was a really cool thing. And uh, since I'm getting into web design tutorials on this channel, I wanted to share web design things I can think of, and this is something that came to mind, and I could see it being useful for people. So if you like these kind of videos where I don't actually 
make something out of that go. I just kind of explain how stuff works. Uh, that'd be cool to let me know. If you do not enjoy this kind of video, if you would prefer me to just make everything from scratch on video, uh, let me know. It takes a little bit longer to do, but it would be more in depth that way. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more possibly useless things in the future. You never know. And uh, see ya.